everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series. We got Mo Neal, just finished up his career at Syracuse running back. Uh, Mo, thanks so much for joining us on the side today. No problem, thanks for having me. Great to have you on. We're lucky to have you on. Glad to talk a little bit about your career at Syracuse here and what your plans are for the future. I mean, I'll start, you know, first of all, congrats on a great career. Um, I mean, how does it just kind of feel to be finished up? I mean, I'm sure you kind of, you know, thought this day would never come, but now it's finally here. So, you know, how do you kind of feel, you know, wrapping up the career at Syracuse, both on the field and off? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been a blessing. It's mm-hmm. been a, a long, a long, stressful ride. But, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't change nothing, man. It's uh, it's shaped me into the young man I am now, mm-hmm. uh, all the ups and downs. And uh, it's been great, you know, mate, that I met people that's going to be in my life for a lifetime, you know, brothers that's always going to be there. Um, and just being able to, to play the game I love on a, a, such a big stage, um, mm-hmm. it's been awesome. And, and then to top it off, uh, you know, to get a uh, such great degree from a prestigious school and be the first one in my family. So it, um, it's been awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. I said, like you said, I, I had a good career there, uh, left my name in the record books and, you know, it's, it's just been a blessing. I mean, yeah, you had so many great moments there just, you know, throughout your four years. Um, and I'm sure some things that will stick with you, you know, for the rest of your life here. Before we kind of get into the stats here, I mean, I want to ask you, do you have any moments that really stick out to you? It's just kind of ones that you will definitely always remember for the rest of your life. Um, I'm obviously probably uh, – my first college game, mm-hmm. um, the first carry that I ever had, you know, I uh, scored a touchdown, 49 mm-hmm. yarders. So um, that's definitely one that's that's going to, you know, stay with me, you know, forever. Because, uh, I mean, obviously you don't see that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was awesome. So Yeah, I mean, I, I want to talk. By the front runner. Oh, yeah, for sure. I want to talk a little bit about that first game ever. As you mentioned, you know, your very first carry, you go for a 49-yard touchdown. Going into that first game of college football, I mean, how nervous were you kind of, you know, it's a big stage right there. It's really that first game where you make that transition from high school to college. How'd you kind of feel going into that one? Uh, definitely nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, uh, you know, being out there, coming out the tunnel for the first time and, you know, seeing the fans and stuff, man, it was it was a surreal feeling. Um, so, you know, it was, I definitely had a lot of butterflies and, you know, I, um, you know, coming from high school, being a man, you know, I wasn't used to uh, really sitting out of the game. So, mm-hmm. you know, I really, I didn't get my, uh, I didn't get into the game till like the uh, start of the second quarter. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was, uh, <laughs> just kind of just sit back watching and uh, watching from the sideline that first quarter. You know, I just had a, I was eager and I had a lot of butterflies and I was just waiting for my opportunity. And, um, and once I got it, man, I, I took advantage of it. Yeah, you definitely did, to say the least. I'd say you looked pretty comfortable in that first game as well. Really, you looked comfortable in your first season, too. Um, I mean, you had 68 carries for 357 yards, a couple touchdowns, played in all 12 games in that first year. So, you know, when you play that much in your first season, I know not a lot of guys even play at all. Um, so kind of getting that experience your, your first year, and I know in your sophomore season, too, you built off that. For those first two seasons, how did that kind of help you for your upperclassmen years? Um, a lot because uh, mm-hmm. you know, being you know thrown out there as a, a true freshman, man, you know, obviously, you know, you you're running around like a chicken with his head cut off because <laughs> you, you don't really you don't really know a lot mm-hmm. of, uh, about what's going on. You just out there playing, and you just out there just. You know, just trying to just trying to make something happen. You, you're not really slowing the game down. Everything is mm-hmm. going fast for you. So, uh, you know, it, it helps a lot for me. So, mm-hmm. there, you know, you know, you know, you done it through it before, um, and now you, you you got a lot of knowledge for the game, and you you know what's going on, and you can be a help to other guys on the field. So, mm-hmm. it definitely helped me there a lot. You know, just being able to have that knowledge and to get to the younger guys that was that I was once in their shoes. No doubt about it. I mean, you really kind of seem to use those first two seasons as motivation, as fuel for your upperclassmen years. I mean, your junior season, you went for 869 yards, five touchdowns, and then you wrapped up the career with 846 yards and seven touchdowns. So, I mean, just a great overall career here. And I know 
you know, playing Syracuse football, Division One football, you know, in your time there, you've played teams like Clemson, you know, Pitt, FSU, you know, Notre Dame, Miami. I mean, you name it, the competition that you've faced in your career has just been, you know, top notch, best in the country. When you're kind of playing teams like that, how does that competition kind of help your game? And I mean, even as a person, how does that kind of help you, you know, just to kind of stick through it mentally and physically throughout the course of a season? Uh, it helps a lot, you know, mm-hmm. especially when you're going up against the best. And um, and I was always taught growing up, you know, um, if you're going to be the best, you got to beat the best. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, playing teams like that definitely motivates you, um, being on a, such a big stage and, and, and you want to perform, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I love competition. You know, that's what strives me. Uh, that's what carried me this this long of a way. Uh, and, you know, I, I love it. I love I love playing the big teams, you know, being the underdogs and and and, uh, and, and surprising people. So you know, it's uh, it definitely helps a lot playing those those type of games. And you know, anybody can be beat on the, mm-hmm. any given Saturday. You know, especially playing in ACC. You know, it's a it's a lot of great competition. No doubt about it. Great conference, and I mean, you guys, you know, always went out there with the fighting mentality, the fighting spirit. Kind of never gave up, um, and it definitely showed on the field right there. And you know, I know just like. As I said, I mean, you made these improvements, you know, each year of your career. Each year you seem to get better. So can you walk us through what your off-season training looked like a little bit, you know, each kind of year at Syracuse here? What would you kind of do to make sure that you were always making that leap to the next level uh, each time you came out in your career here? Uh, I just – I was already proud of myself on uh, never – you know, not just staying the same. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I always – off-season, I always went hard with uh, – with eating right, um, making mm-hmm. sure I'm putting the right stuff in my body, um, you know, make sure I'm doing the necessary things to uh, get my body prepared, you know, cause obviously playing right and back, you know, you taking hits constantly, um, you know, you're blocking uh, linebackers and me being the undersized guy, you know, I'm not the typical prototype, you know, running back, you know, that people look for with the, you know, 210, 215 frame. Um, so, you know, I definitely proud of myself on uh, – just being durable, um, and I think I succeeded at that. I, all four years, you know, you know, I was blessed with uh, being able to play every single game. I mm-hmm. didn't miss a single game, um, so it, it, that that's definitely one of the most you know proudest you know stat lines. Uh, it don't show up in the stat line, but that's mm-hmm. one of the most proudest things I am uh, of my whole career, man. Just being durable and being able to be uh, held accountable and um, and be out there, go out there and fight for my team every weekend. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, it was, it's was it been great. I mean, the fact that you didn't miss a game your entire career, to see that in, in football is extremely rare. I mean, I don't know how many times it's been done for sure, because as you said, you know, the numbers don't really tell that. But just with the physicality of the game and whatnot, I mean, you rarely see a guy kind of have that durability that you had. Um, so clearly, you know, your off season your regular season, you know, you were doing things right to kind of stay in shape there, make sure that your body held up, and uh, it definitely served you well, you know, throughout your career at Syracuse. And, I mean, looking back now, I know going before Syracuse here, your high school career uh, was outstanding. I mean, 4,631 rush yards, 2,251 receiving yards, and 103 total touchdowns. Um, you don't see that from every guy in the country. I can tell you that right there. Uh, your first player from your high school to earn an offer to a power five school. So kind of setting the way for the guys in the future as well. So I know starting off here, you know, in high school, you're kind of one of these guys that really did it all. I know you were a return specialist. Then obviously your offensive abilities, how does the return game kind of help you, you know, on the offensive side of things? Was there, you know, any skills that kind of translated over? Um, I, I, I can say what helped me in the return game would, mm-hmm. uh, would probably be, um, my baseball skills, uh, with mm-hmm. tracking the punt down. I play center field in baseball and, uh, tracking the ball down was, uh, kind of something that I always done. And I really like translated that mm-hmm. off to football, you know, just, uh, just watching the punter's leg and, and uh, being able to track the ball and be able to know where it's going to be before he actually kicks it uh, mm-hmm. helped me out a lot um, with that standpoint. And I guess uh, I guess always being able to 
have such vision and to know uh, where everybody's at, it helped me out a lot too. It was translated to, you know, playing running back, um, you know, obviously because, you know, when you in a return game, playing punt return, you know, you have to see those gunners, um, you know, coming down and you got to kind of peek at them and peek at the ball. So being able to have that awareness definitely translate to my actual position. And, uh, you know, and kickoff return, you know, just reading the blocks, you know, I know they took out the wedges, but when I was playing mm-hmm. kickoff return, you know, you had the wedges and stuff like that that you have to read. And um, and, it, and it just translates, you know, it just translates to, you know, me playing running back and I, I was reading uh, my offensive line blocks and stuff like that or my receiver blocks on the edge. So it, it all goes hand to hand. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've seen that a couple times, uh, kind of unique to see that connection with baseball and football. I think it's one you wouldn't really think of, um, but I have seen it a couple times. So, and you know, with the, with the kick returning, punt returning, it's a lot harder than people kind of think. Um, there's a lot more like technicalities to it and whatnot. Uh, and a lot of things that you kind of have to realize before the ball's kicked, you know, what you're going to do, you know, who's blocking who and stuff. So uh, definitely kind of a unique transition right there. And I know, you know, another part of your game was, was the receiving game. And, I mean, that's something we're seeing running backs do more and more, kind of be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. Is I mean, how do you train for that, too? Because receiving is another one of these things, especially coming out of the backfield. You know, people see a guy catch a ball and they're like, all right, he caught a ball, like, congrats. But it, it's there's a lot more into it. So, I mean, how do you kind of make sure that you train properly to have that dual threat aspect of your game as a running back where you can run the ball and catch the ball? Yeah, I, I always, like, every day, you know, I catch at least 150 to 200 uh, balls a day, wow. um, you know, just to, just to keep my hands right um, and – you know, it, it helps a lot, you know, being able to do multiple things because that's how you increase your chances of getting on the field with the, uh, with playing with talented players around you. Uh, so, you know, it, it helps a lot, uh, especially knowing how to, you know, route run, um, being able to get open and create space. Uh, and, you know, like I said, it just helps your chances where, you know, it gives the offensive coordinator multiple things that they can do, multiple packages, you know, they can, you know, spread you out. Um wide motion you back to the backfield without even making uh substitutions and uh mm-hmm. and that and that helps the offense out a lot. So I definitely pride myself on uh being able to catch well, being able to catch well out of the backfield. Um and, you know, I, I I displayed that and I think I think I had like uh one drop this year, the first game of the season. I mm-hmm. remember I had one drop out of the backfield, um and no more after that. So, you know, I definitely pride myself on being able to catch the ball and being able to be a threat. That dual threat, you know, running back is kind of what every team needs right there. And you certainly supplied that in high school and in college for Syracuse. And I know, you know, just this overall, you know, all around great athlete. You were ranked as a top athlete in your home state of North Carolina by Scout.com. So, you know, coming from North Carolina, um, I mean, what made you kind of choose Syracuse? Uh, I know you were getting college offers, you know, your first year of high school and just kind of throughout high school, but what had you settled on Syracuse to come up up north to New York here? Uh, you know, I was I was been a guy that um getting recruited, you know, I always said I wanted to go somewhere to make change. Um mm-hmm. somewhere that was gonna definitely give me an opportunity to an opportunity to, you know, play as a freshman, um, mm-hmm. to make an impact right away. Uh uh also a great education. Um mm-hmm. And I also was a guy too that, you know, every, everybody around here, you know, they either go to North Carolina, uh, Duke. And mm-hmm. They're not saying I didn't love those schools because, you know, I did. Um, I have great love for all the in-state schools. Um, but at the end of the day, you uh, know, Syracuse just, you know, just checked off every box that I um, was looking for. Um, mm-hmm. wasn't too far away, but it was far enough for me to be on my own in New York uh, to become a young man, like I said. Um, also, it was a uh, Power 5 school playing in the ACC, so you play in top conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also it was a school that was not really that big in football, um, and I wanted to be a part of a change, and uh, and they, they fitted that as well. Also, like I said, a great education. And other than that, and when I took my visits up there, I took like 
two or three before I, I actually committed. And mm-hmm. uh, obviously, and it was by the old coaching staff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, my last visit was with – my official visit was with Coach Babers now, but my unoffic- all my unofficial visits were with Coach Schaefer. Um, so it was just uh, – it was great. It was great vibes. Um, you know, the players, was, like I said, I created a bond with uh, – a lot of players, a lot of the older players as well too. I always mm-hmm. kind of been a guy that adapted to people that's older than me. You know, my mm-hmm. all my closer friends two to three years older than me. So um, it's it's been a great uh, great decision that I made. Uh, one of the best decisions that I made so far in my life. I wouldn't change nothing. Uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you know, you wish things could have went a little bit better, but at the end of the day, you know, I feel like. Uh, I did. I did my part, and uh, I have no regrets. And you know, I'm just thankful and blessed. I would say you made a pretty good decision. If I had to, if I had to say, I think, um, you know, you definitely fit well with the Syracuse program. So I think you made the right decision um, by going to Syracuse because you know, just kind of seemed like the right school for you. I know, you know, you mentioned those in-state schools that you guys have in North Carolina. Obviously, very good, but you know. It's always good to kind of spread the wings a little bit, you know, step away from the crowd, go off, do your own thing. And I mean, I think that really just kind of sets you up not only in football, but in life as well. So I think that's always kind of a great experience to have, you know, relatively early on in your life right there. And, you know, just kind of looking at your career as a whole, um, I like to ask this question. I mean, what's kind of the best advice that you've ever received, you know, about football that has kind of stuck in your mind always, you know, maybe on one of those days, one of those training days where you're trying to battle through adversity, trying to get a few more reps in. What's kind of that piece of advice that you think about that kind of drives you to the next level? Um, you know, I have a lot of motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. Uh, um. I guess I would just say just uh I don't know, just just coming just just seeing where I come from and uh and how far I've gotten, man, it uh it motivated me a lot just to get up every day and like you said it was multiple days and now I got up, you know, those five thirty workouts. Uh there's been multiple times where I just wanted to just lay back down and mm-hmm. <laughs> and say, Man, forget this but um <laughs> but you know, it was uh I don't know. It was just something in me that, uh, and I, I would say, you know, my pops always instilled in me, you know, just, uh, you know, be consistent in whatever you do. Um, mm-hmm. And like I said, nothing's going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I've already overcome a lot. So, and uh, that was definitely something I, I took with me, you know, throughout my whole four years there, man. It's just, uh, I've came a long way. I got a lot of people uh, depending on me. Um, like I said, I come from a very small town and uh, a lot of people rooting for me. And I just want to be that example to to others, you know, and not only just with football, but with whatever you do, man, just mm-hmm. uh, give it all you got. Um, because, you know, like you say, you never know when it's going to end. Um, so, you know, you just got to live life and, you know, live life to the fullest and, I said, do your best, and uh, that's something I always take with me. Um, I actually wrote it up in my, my uh, walls and mm-hmm. stuff like that, that uh, and in my dorm room. So you know, it was, it's like I say, it's uh, it's been great, and um, like I said, I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't change nothing. So mm-hmm. it's been awesome. I mean, that's great advice right there, and just kind of taking it day by day, you know, enjoying the journey. I mean, that's kind of the big thing right there, because um, you know. No matter, you know, you could be the greatest football player of all time. You know, someday the football journey ends. Um, and, you know, it's just, just kind of got to enjoy each day right there. So it's great to see that you're kind of doing that and just taking things one step at a time. And, I mean, you, you wrap up a fantastic career at Syracuse. Um, I know you're in this kind of unique spot now looking for your next opportunity at that next level. Uh, I mean, what are your plans right here kind of for the future? I mean, are are you hoping to go to the league right now, NFL, or just play professionally somewhere? Or and and what are you kind of doing to you know train for that next level? And what are you hoping to have kind of open up for you within the next couple of years here? Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, my goal is still to to get into the NFL. Mm-hmm. I know with this 
you know, the pandemic that happened, um, you know, it's been crazy. Um, mm-hmm. There's still a lot of questions to be answered. Um, obviously, a lot of things didn't go my way. Uh, you know, I didn't get to have a pro day. Unfortunately, didn't get uh, drafted like I wanted to. Um, mm-hmm. Didn't get, didn't have a undrafted free agent contract, you know, either. So, you know, it's it's kind of been rough. But uh, like I say, uh, before, man, I've always been motivated. Um, nothing in my life ever came easy. Um, and I always had a chip on my shoulder. I always felt like a guy that uh, that's always been overlooked. Um, so I'm definitely working. Uh, I'm still hungry. Uh, I still want to play in the NFL, definitely. Uh, and I know I will. You know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say that. I know I will play in the NFL one day, man. Just uh, it's God's timing. I know he didn't bring me this far to let me down. So as right now, I'm just staying, staying in shape and controlling what I can control. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever that will be, uh, maybe that's this year, next year, a couple years from now. Um, I'm definitely not giving up on my dream yet, uh, hanging up those cleats because uh, I know I still got a lot left football to play um, in me. And uh, so that's where I'm at right now uh, with everything and, you know, just hoping to hear some good news here soon. I know uh, guys are supposed to start reporting you know, the camp soon. So, you know, hopefully you know, I get the uh, workout or, or however they're going to do things. I know mm-hmm. they're still talking with my agent and stuff. I know they're still trying to finalize a lot of stuff with guys that are uh, I haven't signed contracts and, and all that type of stuff. So, you know, I'm just, uh, like I said, controlling what I can control and, mm-hmm. and that's being ready for whenever my time is called. And whenever that is, I'll definitely be ready and, and you know, ready to, prove people wrong like I've been doing my whole life so I just mm-hmm. can't wait I love that mentality right there I don't think it'll be a matter of if you get an opportunity I think it's a matter of when you get that opportunity right now for sure mm-hmm. um because you've definitely proven yourself there's no doubt about that and then as you mentioned I mean right now it's just kind of literally the weirdest time possible in sports that we could you know ever have um so I, I'm sure you know a lot of teams trying to get things sorted out i mean even the nfl as a whole trying to get things sorted out right now still don't kind of, we still don't really know what's gonna kind of happen with the other sports here nba mlb i mean they have a plan in place but who knows right now so i'm hoping things get back to normal um can't wait to see what you do you know once you get your shot here once you get your opportunity you're still very young obviously you know just coming out of college um so you definitely still have time on your side that is for sure um, i always like to end the interview on a couple questions the first one a fun one the second one one you might have thought about one you might not have thought about so much um, but we'll see there but the first question here i have to ask you i mean as a running back if you could score a touchdown or just have a monster game against any nfl team what would that team be i mean it might be one that you kind of have a little bit of a hatred for here a little bit of a rivalry for but what would that team be? Uh, I guess it would be. Uh, I'll go with the. I'll go with the Cowboys. Yeah. I, I like that. I like to have a big game against the Cowboys. <laughs> um, obviously, because that's America's team. Everybody mm-hmm. is everybody like Cowboy fans, right? Or even Patriots fans too. I wouldn't mind having a big game against the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> you you gotta you gotta watch out. Our site space in Massachusetts, so you gotta watch out here. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful, oh, man. But no, nah, it's uh, <laughs> like I say, yeah, I, those are probably the top two teams. But uh, you know, those those might be the two teams that give me opportunities. <laughs> mm-hmm. They might be. They might. You, you gotta <laughs> definitely, definitely, you gotta watch what I say. I guess. <laughs> Uh, you know, see, I, I feel like the people listening from there and now uh, when you said Cowboys, everyone's like, all right, he's not he's not against the Pats here. And then you said Pats and they're like, OK, we might have a little beef right now. But um, but y'all, and, uh, but they did pick up uh, my guy Cam, though. Always. Oh, yeah. I love for Cam. Yeah, I met him a couple of times, he, you know, because I'm from, you know, Charlotte, and mm-hmm. the Charlotte area, you know. So uh, he's a lovable guy, man. Y'all going Y'all going to love him up there in Massachusetts. I think so. I mean, I, I love his work mm-hmm. ethic right now. I mean, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen the Instagram videos, the social media posts. Oh, yeah. He has been exactly. putting in the work. There's no doubt about that. So, oh, yeah. um, that'll, oh, he is ready. Yeah. I mean, that'll be really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to this season. 
and um you know i'm sure it'll be a really good one sure it'll be it'll be interesting to say the least i mean i'll see how the uh the system kind of works you know without tom brady but uh yeah i mean yeah that, that was obviously a tough loss right there losing brady but i mean we'll see what happens yeah. um and uh, i think it should be a fun future but um yeah if if we ever do see you in new england uh you know hopefully you know the fans forget about that you know They'll be happy to have you. They'll be happy to have you because when you're saying you want to put up a big game against New England, um, you know, we don't want to lose. So if we have you, you don't have to put up any big games against us. You can be doing it against Dallas and, uh, we'll be much, we'll be much happier for you. That's for sure. Um, so to close up here, um, I mean, outstanding career, Mo. Uh, that, that goes without saying. Um, I just want to ask you, you know, just you know as a question to kind of wrap up what has football meant to you i mean this is something you've been playing your entire life um something that has got you through a lot of things it seems like you've put in so much work i you know you can't even count the hours so what has a sport kind of meant to you and if you could describe in kind of one word or phrase how would you describe it oh it's it's, it's meant a lot man it's Mm -hmm. kind of hard to Put it in, I guess, a word. Uh, I mean, it's been uh, it's been awesome. It's been nothing but uh, amazing. Um, it's it took me places that I I never thought about going. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it's definitely been uh, a great ride. You know, from playing little leagues and starting at seven years old all the way to you know twenty two year old twenty two mm-hmm. years old. It's um. It's been it's been awesome. Like I said, I've been created friendships that will last forever. Um, it's done brought me education. It's done paved the way for a lot of things. Um, it's definitely it's definitely been my world. But mm-hmm. I also don't uh, want people to you know know me as this football. You know, I I always you know wanted to plot myself on being more than just an athlete. And, mm-hmm. You know, just more than just a football player and and uh, just. You know, just being somebody that uh, that somebody can talk to and, and and feel like they, I can relate to people outside of football. You know, mm-hmm. so but football has done amazing things for me. You know, and uh, like I say, I, I wouldn't change nothing, man. And I, I've been so blessed and so grateful to to have a God given ability to be able to pave the way for guys uh the younger guys that are coming behind me in my city and even the younger guys that are at Syracuse that looked up to me and uh mm-hmm. it's, it's it's been awesome and uh like I say it's I wouldn't change nothing and and hopefully uh you know I continue to be able to do that and be able to use my platform um to to uh, inspire others and in anything that they do mm-hmm. I mean you've been a great role model in your hometown community in the Syracuse community um unbelievable journey here uh it was really fun watching you at syracuse it's going to be really fun watching you at the next level um i mean as a, uh, i want to say again you know congrats on an amazing career at syracuse um best of luck you know with this next step here professional football in the nfl you know can't wait to see what you do once you get your opportunity here as i said i hope everything just kind of gets cleared up with this pandemic um but Mo Neal, I mean, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Absolutely great to have you on. We're lucky uh, that you joined us here. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yeah, no problem. Like I said, thanks for having me, and uh, take care. And I was going to say we hear some good news here soon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, maybe I'll be with the Pats or something. <laughs> hey, no problem at all. And if you're with the Pats, we'll, we'll definitely be rooting for you. There's, no matter where you end up, we'll be rooting for you. You end yeah. up with New you end up with New England. I mean, we'll be your biggest fans over here. So uh, <laughs> that's that's the deal yeah, right yeah. there. But um, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing you know where you go next here. Um, I'm sure wherever it'll be, you'll you'll be pretty happy and it'll be great. And um, no matter what, you'll get your chance to have a huge game against New England or the Cowboys. So you can't be on, you can't be on both teams. So uh, you're gonna have a big game against someone here. So. Um, I know, yeah, it'll be, someone's in for some trouble, um, I don't know what fan base it is, but, but we'll see who it is, um, but yeah, Mo Neal, thanks so much for joining us, we'll put your Twitter down below, uh, so people can go follow your career, we'll put the handle right down below, and we'll also put a link to Syracuse's football website, so you guys can follow for news and updates here, 
Um, but guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network, another edition of the Summer Series. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you guys next time.